Very excited to welcome Long Island Pekin right here on set. How are you today? I'm fantastic. Thank you for having me. So you are the founder, the proprietor, the executive chef. Yes. Yes, now, I am. Did you grow up in a restaurant industry? Uh, I didn't, actually. Okay. Um, I mean, I always worked in restaurants, but my family uh, weren't. Uh, my dad was actually uh, in construction, okay. and he kind of fell into it. He has a master's in mechanical engineering, but somehow life happened, and he became sort of a, an interior designer for movie theaters, believe it or not. Fun? Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's very specific. So he picks out the upholstery and the carpeting and yeah. where the sconces go. Exactly. And... Oh, my, a lot of people don't even notice those things, but yes, he oh, does Oh, I noticed all, all those things. Yeah, well, yeah. I noticed when you came into my studio that you noticed all those things. So I guess you didn't, you know, you maybe have a similar aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's in me. <laughs> what does your location look like? What's your restaurant look like? Um, it's very simple. Okay. Uh, we like to keep it simple so we can keep it clean. Um, visually, it's, I guess, uh, a homey feeling and uh, a, a kind of a, a Long Island and Manhattan kind of had a baby. That's what our restaurant kind of looks like. Oh, I like that. That's yeah. a really good description because yeah. visually I can see that. And for yeah. our audience at home all over the country, it's kind of like a boho chic matches uh, your mom's kitchen. Yes, yes, yes. Blend yes. it, right? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. There's some wood, but not too much. And then there's some, uh, you know, a lot of straight lines, but again, not too much. Um, and what was your dad's opinion since he's now the interior designer for theaters? Was, oh. does, yeah, did my he help dad. you at all? <laughs> well, my dad is, uh, uh, I guess you could call him an immigrant Chinese uh, father and uh, everything, he, he, he disapproves everything. Okay, you know? okay, because he thinks it motivates you. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, yeah. and how, what about the Probably. rest of your, what about your rest of your family and your friends? What are they thinking about oh, my your friends restaurant? love it. Um, you know, they're all very supportive, but, uh, you know, my family, some have been there, some haven't. I actually, okay. uh, I didn't grow up in Long Island, so it's Where are you uh, from? very... Uh, Rockland County. I was okay. born and raised in Rockland County, upstate New York. Nice. And um, so it's, it's hard for a lot of my family to get to my restaurant. So you made new friends. I made a lot of new friends. I'm a transplant mm -hmm. too. I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, And so wow. all the people that I know on Long Island are people that I once didn't know. Right, right, right. right. Um, but uh, owning a restaurant must be fun because you have new customers and friendly faces coming in. You brought us some beautiful. Thank you. Beautiful art. Thank you, thank okay? you. Okay, it's not you. just food, it's art. Tell us what this array is. So um, in the center is our Peking duck, uh, it's the most popular dish that uh, people come to our restaurant for. Um, and then the white things are buns that go with the Peking duck. You kind of make like a, a taco, a duck yes. taco. And with what's it. a formal word for those? Uh, those are bows. That's what I thought. Okay, yeah. got it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then white you could, buns. Uh, I like exactly. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then you accompany that with uh, our house made plum sauce, cucumbers, and um, scallion. Lovely. These two are from our dim sum menu. It's the green jade on this part right here. And that's a shrimp and watercress dumpling. And that color comes from the watercress. Um, and the red one is a beet and cuttlefish dumpling that uh, is colored by the beet juice. Now, how did you learn the art of that? Because when you're making a dumpling, mm -hmm. right, it's a certain recipe in order to get it to come and fold and present itself exactly right. Right, right. Who taught you that? Well. I'll be honest, yeah. I am not a master at dumpling making. Okay. Um, when I opened this restaurant, I had to make a decision. Did okay. I want to be on the customer side of things or the kitchen side of things? Right. I ultimately decided to be on the customer side just to okay. give more of a, a personal experience to the customer. Nice. And um, so I had to gather up a bunch of expert chefs to complete my menu. Okay. It's a combination of uh, items from my previous restaurants, my own personal recipes, and then those expert chefs kind of completed the focus. How do you know when you go into a restaurant and it has uh, food served in like these cute bamboo steamer bowls, right? When to use chopsticks, when to use a fork, like what is, you know, what the etiquette behind it? How do you know? Right. Right. Well, the quick answer is there's never a wrong way. But if you're good with chopsticks, yes, always use chopsticks. You know, I'm um, pretty good at it, actually. You like I learned I learned at a dim sum restaurant that's no longer here. When right. I used to work in this building every day for lunch. They would go down Route 110 and there was a, and they had the dim sum cart and they brought yeah. the cart out. And it my favorite thing that I can't find anywhere. And maybe you'll start making it for me <laughs> is it was a steamed rice. It had a cabbage leaf yeah, yeah, and it yeah. had sticky rice. And inside the sticky rice, you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? I know exactly. Okay, what you're could about. you maybe make that for me or find uh, one of your friends personally. that could try? I'll make okay. it personally for you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you go home tonight, you'll be like looking up the recipe. Um, but there's something about that. I think when you use certain utensils, mm -hmm. that the food actually tastes, it's more of an experiential yeah. type of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. You know, okay. um, chopsticks are so 
universally uh, used. I mean, a lot of people don't know. They think it's just two sticks and it's hard to use, but you could cut with them. You could, I mean, like it, it's, it's the safest um, utensil, I think, because you can actually have a long reach with them. Yeah, they're you know? kind of cool. Um, and so how I learned is that you, you place, you know, you, you place them here and then you, everything, all the work is done in your like index finger. Absolutely. So I'd be happy, maybe we could do a lesson. Absolutely. Maybe you come back and we'll be like, we'll oh, do a lesson anytime. on how to use chopsticks. I love that. So here, this is prepared. Um, and this is your one of your staple items on your menu. Yes, yes. Um, we've been doing this since. Well, I've been doing this since two thousand four with okay. my other restaurants, and um, you know it's kind of changed over the years, but uh, for good reason. You know because I've I've kind of listened to a lot of the customers, where my demographic is, where my location is. A lot of people just gravitate towards certain textures, so um, we render out all the fat. Okay. Rather than just keeping some of it, because okay. in the Chinese that's what I was going like to ask you, because it, it does look very tasty. It doesn't. Thank so you take you're pulling all the fattiness out, and you're yeah. just going with the flavor. Right, right, right. That's exactly what we did, and um, and so far it's been it's been working. You know, um, my dad doesn't approve of it because he likes a little <laughs> fat in there, but, uh, but you hey. could you could put a little fat on the side for your dad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, he sounds really lovely. And the plum sauce. How do you get a good, consistent plum sauce? What are your suggestions? So the suggestion is that uh, it has to be completely smooth. You okay. don't want any grittiness on your tongue when you're eating um, any of the uh, the Peking duck. So um, well blended, uh, a sauce that kind of stays in place rather than being a little bit runny. Okay. Um, and and that's the key to really good, you know. Experience. It should be placed, not poured. Yes. yes okay. So the placed. sauce should be placed. More like spread, right. even. Spre okay. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Yeah. Fun food tips from you today. Absolutely. Um, and also, I heard heard that you created like a pop up taco thing. Yeah. What that, was I that? Mean, that was all many things coming together during COVID. Um, you know, it all started with. Uh, my general manager, Eric, he took me to this taco truck in Queens. He said it was the best tacos he ever had. And me being, I guess, kind of arrogant, saying, like, I've had many tacos. I don't, I don't need to try another taco. Um, two months of begging, we went. They were the best tacos I've ever had, even waiting four hours for them. Wow. The line was around three quarters. Wow. Yeah, parking but, was insane. So after hour two, you were like, all right, it must be good if these people are in yeah. front of me waiting this long and if the line's behind me. Absolutely. My goodness. And they were, they were fantastic. They're, they're um, birria tacos, which I never heard of uh, before then. Okay. And they're just these braised beef tacos, traditionally goat, and you dip it in the, the broth or the consomme that the beef cooks in. And uh, such a simple but interesting idea. And I just decided the next week... I was going to recreate my own just because I didn't want to wait on the line, not because I wanted to make it a business or anything. I understand. So uh, I did. The, the team at the restaurant loved them, said they were better. So I was like, okay, great. We have a dish for a family meal occasionally. And um, we parked that idea aside. COVID was still there. The chefs loved their COVID hours. They loved getting back to their family early. We had some extra time at the end of the night. And somebody said, why don't we do these tacos? I did a presentation on how this could happen. And, and the voila. rest is history. Yeah, yeah, I think it's all about having an idea and implementing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times people have great ideas, but then they're not taking action. Oh, the execution, right? Right, yeah, and yeah, so yeah. obviously you've done that for yourself and yeah. for many. You're an inspiration. I Thank think it's you. wonderful oh, what wow. you what Thank you do. You. Um, and I know my crew's been like. You know, eyeing all, <laughs> eyeing <Absolutely. this> food. <laughs> um, but thank you so much, and I look forward to seeing you at your location. Thank you. And I wanted to make sure it was spelled correctly because I was like, "Oh, doesn't it have a G on it?" And Jenna's like, "No, the restaurant." So it is Peking with a G duck, but yes. no, but Peking is yes, the restaurant. Just, so just quickly, um, yes. I was looking up. I don't know what I was searching for when I was coming up with the name for the restaurant, right? But um, Long Island Peking without the G is yes. the breed of duck. Okay. And that just happens to be the, the number one breed that Peking duck is used for. Really? And Peking with the G is the preparation of the duck. It's just confusing but coincidental. There you go. So yeah. the things we learn, yeah, right? The absolutely. show is always meant to be edutainment, education yeah. and entertainment. Oh, wow, that's great. And so there we well, there you go. Well, we <laughs> hope that you enjoyed our visit. Um, and we hope that your recipes that are tried and true, that maybe this holiday season you'll make them slightly different. You know, it's okay. You have permission. We give you permission to become the chef you'd like to be. Thanks for watching.